2024 marks the 25th year anniversary of One Piece, so I'm low-key glad that I waited until now to do the video, among a few other reasons that we'll get to in a moment. But anyway, y'all been requesting the heck out of this video, so let's talk One Piece fashion. Hola, my name is X, and I like to experiment with fashion as well as talk about whatever the hell I want on social media whenever I feel like it. And in this video, I'm going to go over the top 10 reasons why One Piece fashion and style is so iconic. I used to watch the anime, but I got bored. I get bored pretty easily in general, so I fell off. But in revisiting the One Piece fandom wiki, which is extremely well organized, I was amazed, borderline shook, as to the wide range and richness of fashion, taste, and style in the series. So I'm really excited to cover those elements for you here. And then I'm going to go ahead and review some of the real world impact that One Piece fashion has had through the form of fashion collaborations, as well as maybe just some miscellaneous impact through social media. And then I'm gonna round this video out by looking at some of the cast of characters, not an exhaustive list. All right, I don't know everybody up in there, but I try to get as many characters as I possibly could. So we're gonna go over some of the personal style of the main characters, and then just look at the amazing outfits of some more of the side characters as well. This video is probably gonna be long enough as is, so let's not waste any time and get straight into the top 10 reasons why One Piece fashion is so iconic. First of all, we can clearly see that there's a wide range of diverse inspirations that go into the clothing and the fashion and style of the characters within the series. I mean, with it being a global adventure and the characters encountering a number of different factions or alliances in different territories and regions, we're naturally going to see some cultural twists within the clothing, ranging from Asian, Western, European, tribal, you name it, it's in there, but it's also not limited to culture. It's also representing a wide range of genres of fashion, whether it be military, samurai, streetwear, high fashion, gothic even. It's, I think that's what makes it so accessible to a wide range of audiences across the globe. And probably why it's so popular is because people can probably see a little speckle of their identity or their character within the franchise. While some of the characters depicted can be a bit exaggerated at times, that only speaks to the strong individualism that the fashion and style lends to the characters. We're getting crazy hairstyles, wild makeup, unique silhouettes, and strong statement items and accessories that really help embody the characters and help differentiate them and give them a true identity of their own. You really don't see too much repeat kind of aesthetics from character to character, which I think is not only a, a high task for the creators, but makes for such an immersive experience character-wise for the viewers. Of course, this is a fantasy series, so it's not real, but the clothing makes it feel real because it's practical and it feels applied to the functions and the roles that the characters play. Whether it be a navigator, a fighter, a captain, the outfits are not only tailored to the functions that the characters have, but it also feels tailored to the environment, making it feel like it's a real setting that the characters are in and that they ultimately serve a genuine purpose, not just for the sake of spectacle or fantasy. I alluded to the obvious pirate aesthetic that the characters have, but there's a little bit of a twist that just makes it feel more elaborate and just more alive and not too flat and one dimensional. We're getting, like I said, strong statement items, but also pop culture references and even some kind of futuristic twist to some of the outfits. As much as I love a Pirates of the Caribbean fantasy, I also like when characters can kind of break out of that box that they may have been put in and serve us a little bit more, showing us that they have the potential to grow into even more diverse and more complex characters. And I feel like the style definitely does that justice and again, just speaks to the grand adventure even though it's a gritty adventure that these pirates are on we're still getting clothes that are bright and vibrant and have some really great patterns and i think that it's the color and the patterns that do an excellent job at differentiating the different outfits that the characters have because they're not just stuck into one uniform the entire series they definitely change in and out and i think that leveraging some strong design concepts like color patterns texture etc does a really good job of tying to their characters tying to their roles and the places but also just not making the clothes feel flat 
giving them more life and giving them more visual interest. Speaking of multiple outfits, I was blown away by the frequent outfit changes that the characters have. I thought it might have just been a few, but when you scroll through the fandom, whoa, like there's literally almost new outfits. I would imagine every few episodes. That's incredible. I thought that there were series like Sailor Moon that did a good job with that, but no, One Piece, I think so far takes the crown from what I've seen. I mean, just the time and energy and thought it takes to give these characters tailored unique outfits from occasion to occasion, amazing. But even though these are serious characters with serious stories, there's still some playfulness and humor to some of the outfits and even some of the specific characters within the series. Even though most of the characters are able to look effortlessly chic, not all of them are so obsessed with their looks or even with impressing anybody. So their style may lean especially more into personality over pure aesthetic. I like that the fashion, even though it can flex as high up as haute couture or high fashion, it still doesn't take itself too seriously, which is again, another reason and that makes it feel so accessible. On the note of flex, I also like how experimental they are with the outfits. Given that they are exercising frequent outfit changes, there's lots of room to get creative and push the boundaries as to how different clothing items can be combined. And I feel like part of haute couture or high fashion is an angle of experimentation. And so I love that they just didn't play it safe and just stuck to kind of plain mundane clothes, which there's always a time and place for that. We need media that is able to kind of be imaginative and go into territories that not everybody's willing to go. You know, if you watch my content, I'm all about that genderless, gender fluidity, androgyny, and One Piece goes there. Some of the outfits can definitely lean on the campier side, but they still facilitate a great exhibition of personal style and further highlight how when it comes to clothing, you can ultimately wear whatever you want, especially if there's a specific way in which you're trying to experience express yourself. And I think that that's a great kind of step for that kind of aesthetic and style, allowing some of that room to explore and again, push those boundaries. But the main reason why I think One Piece fashion is so iconic is, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, the body confidence. I thought at first it was maybe a little exploitative because I thought maybe it was too much fan service with the women showing lots of titty and waist and all that good stuff. But the men Men are also serving us a plethora of body confidence. We're getting abs, chest, legs, guns, you, it's in there. We're getting body, okay? And I feel like if you're traveling, like they're how they're traveling and you're rugged and in pursuit of some stuff and have to compete against others, you're gonna rock some confidence. Love to see it. Now that we know why One Piece fashion is so iconic, let's take a look as to how it's impacted the fashion industry and explore a few examples examples of some collaborations that took place. So of course we have the Gucci One Piece collaboration that took place I believe in 2020. It was illustrations. I think that this was a definitely a good blend between representing the brand's style pretty well but also staying true to the character's personal style. They feature some items that are a little streetwear, but just with a nice elevated chic twist, which I think that Gucci kind of does in general. Like, of course, we have the straw hat on Luffy and he's wearing plenty of shorts, but also Zaro's looks just feel very masculine, long coats, well draped exactly how he looks in the series. I will say that Zoro's is my favorite just because I feel like his outfits are just a bit more chic, but Luffy definitely represents more of that kind of youthful, fun, casual side that Gucci can also convey. Then there was also a GCDS collaboration for Milan Fashion Week in 2022, and I definitely feel like this is a much more high fashion twist, particularly the real life clothing items. And I think that the collection did a good job of kind of balancing some obvious in your face symbols and emblems from the show, but also some inspired outfits that you could probably see some of the women wear. And I also think like Gucci, they did a great job with the illustrations in representing the brand decently, but also staying true to the character's personal style. So you know that's a good collaboration if they can do that. I love that One Piece can have impact not only from a commercial perspective, but a high fashion perspective as well, which just speaks to like we 
discussed in the iconic section what, that they have such a wide range of inspirations and they can definitely cover the full spectrum of people's interests and tastes. But just yesterday from when I'm filming this, there was Steve Aoki's 2025 spring summer collection one piece collaboration in celebration of the 25th anniversary and i was fortunate enough to catch glimpses of it on their stories amazing just like how he described it to vogue the runway set was a cool projective immersive experience with i think like the floor and the seats having like a map projection which was so cool the collection definitely was more streetwear oriented, but you could feel and see that sense of sophistication that was sprinkled onto these. I think that this is definitely DMOC's strongest runway collaboration, anime co collaboration collection to date. I love to see that he can champion for this intersection between anime and fashion. So I'm excited to see where else he goes with this. My favorite item or statement kind of piece within the collection were those like futuristic boots that were seen in the egghead arc of the series that was that already had some of my favorite outfits of the characters anyway but just to kind of see those boots manifest themselves in the real world uh, i just love to see it hate it or love it but if a series can have that kind of influence on people to empower them and inspire them to explore their style and even explore the style of the characters in the series like it did that and so i definitely think it's worth discussing highlighting and honoring a piece of media that can transcend time and just continue to make an ongoing impact year after year. Right, now that we've covered some of that context around One Piece fashion, style, and real world impact, let's get into the real part of this video, which is going over some of the characters within the series and looking at their personal style and just kind of describing it, getting, getting acquainted with it, and taking a look at some of their outfits. I'm not gonna go over too many of my favorite outfits of the characters. I think I'm just gonna say that for a separate video. All right, starting with Monkey D. Luffy himself. He has his signature kind of red vest or some sort of like red tank or any sort of tank or loose top in general, shorts and sandals, which that's not very tight, that's not stuffy. It's very loose and very comfortable and casual. And there's different variations of this look. He's predominantly wearing shorts. I mean, just like even with that kind of fur texture, which I also appreciate and love, that helps it not to look too flat, but he's not really too limited to that. He is capable of wearing things that are a bit more sophisticated and even more formal, but he doesn't dabble in that style as much as the other male characters do. He definitely likes to keep it loose and keep it free. And he's free spirited in general, so I think that that style definitely is embodied and he doesn't have too many accessories again just further exemplifying that he isn't so concerned with the looks he's just out there to explore the world Zaro style on the other hand is definitely more traditional and rugged he's very much giving us that fighter orientation he has his traditional attire where he's wearing that green har haramaki bell pretty consistently through a number of the different elements or outfits. So I love that there's a consistent element like that to just speak to his personal style. That's definitely a statement item for Zaro in this case. And he has a very muscular silhouette. And even though he does give us some chest and body confidence from time to time, I think that body confidence can also come in the form of really complimenting, complimenting your shape. His color palette is pretty limited, but there is some kind of minor differentiation from look to look just to kind of help keep things fresh. He doesn't have as, as wide a range of outfit style as say a Sanji, but we do still get to see him kind of flex into some other different looks, even some casual looks. Let's talk Nami, Miss Nautical and Playful. I just remember her, when I first discovered the anime, I was around her same canonical age, and I just loved her attitude, her charm. She does have some pretty, pretty typical like striped shirts and those like heeled sandal shoes that she wears quite frequently that come in some different colors. But she also dresses things up and gets a little more girly with some kind of frilly skirts, some cute blouses or crops, and then even some strong statement jackets that just further give her some grandness, aura, and silhouette. So I just love to see that she's able to dabble in a bit of a range. It's definitely not as mature 
as a Nico Robin, but it still is very confident and sophisticated and even glamorous in some cases. Like she can pull off a gown, she can go there, but it's just not her main thing. And I love that she's so confident enough to just give us a bra and some low cut jeans. So 2000s Y2K, she's that girl. She's definitely an it girl. Sanji is definitely elegant and sophisticated from a masculine perspective. I mean, his whole family is is glamorous. And we're going to touch on a few of his siblings because they are the high fashion crew of this series. And I love that he's kind of takes that style from the family and goes in his own way. We typically see him in some sort of collared shirt, even if it's casual, even if it's laid back, buttoned shirt element that still carries that air of sophistication wherever he goes and whatever he does. I love that he also plays with a number of different patterns within that kind of format and uniform. There is still a sense of personality and identity and character that can kind of pop out with those colors and patterns. But overall, he definitely is Mr. Suave and cool with his style. Nico Robin is also sophisticated, but she has a little bit of an air of mystery to her style. I love that she gives us a little bit of that Western twist with the cowboy hats. She has a lot of body confidence and she can even be kind of cute and playful with her style. Similar to Sanji has like a colored element to some of her tops more than Nami does. I feel like that's what differentiates Robin's style and gives her even more of a mature twist. She even kind of gives a little boa style too, just with some of like the skirts that she wears. It feels very elegant and she is also capable of wearing some gowns and just even some more glamorous and luxurious items but overall I love when she's just giving us like that kind of collared buttoned crop look with a kind of cute pant or skirt it just feels very effortlessly cool girl and very effortlessly chic and she knows she's got it going on I also like when she plays with kind of the sunglasses or just the glasses look in general. She almost looks like a whole different character. Usopp, I always remember just being a bit more of like the humorous character in the crew. But while his style is definitely quirky, it's also a bit inventive. I love that he's rocking those overalls that he wears and he wears quite a few pairs of those. Just speaking to a bit more of like the utilitarian nature of his style and even some of the functionality, just being very practical and being very resourceful with those accessories. There are still some kind of goofy elements, but honestly, he has plenty of capability to be sophisticated and even cool with some of his style. It's definitely a bit more streetwear, but when he's wearing those things like bucket hats and just kind of cool, loose pants and belts, straps, etc., like I just really like that they're able to kind of dress him up and give him some of that cool guy flair which definitely someone like him is more than capable of pulling off. But of course, we need Tony Tony Chopper to just give us more of that cutesy, fun, whimsical style. Being such a cute, small figure most of the time, we're getting little cute coats and cute pairs of shoes and boots, little bows, just little fun elements that just make it so adorable. Bright, cheerful colors and patterns. Just a nice little top hat headpiece in general. Also does kind of dabble into some more traditional wear. I would say that he does more than even some of the other characters along the lines of maybe what Azaro does. But overall, it's just a pretty cute, plain, fun style that is definitely much needed to kind of break up some more of the mature and serious and rigid kind of style that some of the other characters have. I would definitely say that Brooke's style is eccentric, but classic. We're also getting a nice kind of formal twist. Most of his silhouettes are just like an obvious, tailored, slim, sophisticated look. But even within some more kind of elevated and sophisticated pieces, we're getting incredible pops of color, interesting textures, nice patterns. I mean, that's, I think, the biggest effort differentiator there is just between his coats, his pants and his shirts. There's just such a wide, playful range of dis design and aesthetic elements to keep his style fresh. That's not to say that he can't dabble in things that are, of course, more casual, but similar to Sanji, I just feel like it also has that air of sophistication still, whether, whether it's a top that's like more of a button up 
or just long sleeve or just has a collar just to maintain that air of class boa is consistently wearing some sort of luxurious gown or some sort of like skirt and top robin wears that kind of combo as well but we consistently see boa in that the most S like side slit open leg kind of like skirts and gowns giving us some great body confidence but not breaking her out of that luxurious classy high fashion realm we're getting gorgeous patterns whether it be floral or just really feels asian inspired in general I really like that there's a character that can kind of carry that glamorous woman torch and she is definitely not breaking out of that. Next we have Waterlaw. What really stood out to me most about his style is really that statement hat that he has. Sometimes you just need one staple item or accessory just to really signify your identity or your personality and then you can just dress around that the most. It feels like it roots him largely in a casual aesthetic where he's often just kind of wearing maybe just some jeans and just like a shirt. I also just love how that hat pairs with like a nice long coat. It just really is a good kind of contrast with something a little more structured and sophisticated with something that's a little more round and casual and free. So Shanks almost reminds me of like an alternative a varied version of Luffy just because he also seems to be wearing like a straw hat in some of his looks. What really stood out to me most was that he consistently has that long coat over his shoulders. Again, that's his statement item, which a lot of the characters have that as an item, but just as it's paired with, I think, a carefree kind of shirt and some kind of khaki or shorts, it feels like, again, we're getting some interesting contrast, especially when he has that straw hat in the mix. And it also looks like he has a haramaki of his own in some of his looks, so he feels like an interesting blend between Luffy and Zaro. I like Kuzan's style because his format also feels pretty consistent. I feel like there's some sort of like coat over the shoulders, but what he does is he plays with some sort of different necktie in some outfits. So whether it's an actual tie or maybe just an ascot, but also we can just get sometimes a loose top, loose long, long sleeve top, or maybe just a vest and more of a button down combo. And I like when he's depicted in white, it feels very military and very admiral. So I like that there's a little bit of a range from something that's a little more boho to something that's a little more sophisticated and elite. Crocodile, like many of the others, also stood out to me because he's wearing a coat over his shoulders, but it has a little more fur for more of that flair and presence and significance. But I think what's so interesting about his more particularly is the differentiation in the pattern and colors within the vest. Again, it just is subtle little differentiations and nuances like that that can help give, give even a minor flex in some of the character style if maybe the designers couldn't just completely do a unique transformative outfit. It stays true to a personal uniform, but definitely gives us some small taste and variation. Do Flamingo is so fabulous with that amazing statement, pink fur coat around his shoulders consistently. And like many other characters, he leverages differentiations in pattern and just some variations in color there within his pants, just to break up some of his outfits and give us something new, but maintains that pink coat within the mix. And I think that the colors within his pants definitely coordinate there just for a nice, vibrant, in-your-face, punchy look. And while he does largely give us some great body confidence in his upper body, we do still get some semi-formal looks and even something a little more buttoned up sometimes with like button downs and vests and whatever have you so there's a nice little subtle range in his style but you know who he is dracule is so interesting because i feel like almost like what his name alludes to we're getting some sort of like dracula pirate musketeer mega hybrid situation his weapon alone is really cool and i like how it coordinates with his cross necklace just for some excellent accessorizing but i also really just like his buckled strappy boots so i just feel like he has some really cool semi 
rich toned and just semi-differentiated accessories that give his look a little bit of a punch outside of the body confidence. Cavendish is so fabulous. I'm actually a little bummed that we didn't get more range but we love an androgynous king. I just love those amazing curls that he has in his hair. And he just also is giving a little bit of a musketeer vibe. I, I genuinely almost thought he was a female character at first. I just really like the effortlessly chic nature of his style. The distressed pants are also a nice touch and some absolutely luxurious, beautiful heeled boots. So I just really love the overall semi-genderless or just androgynous flair and tone that he's giving with his style absolutely amazing i think what does ace's style best for me is just the accessorizing we see that he can just literally just be completely bare chested with his shorts and his boots but it's the hat it's the necklaces it's the belts it's the utility elements that really i think give that differentiated characterization just even with such a plain simple borderline no outfit but i also really love when he's wearing like that long kind of coat and statement scarf around his neck so again it just goes to speak to the accessorizing that really is what rounds out his style and makes it truly his own eustace kid similar to Flamingo, has an amazing statement fur coat that he wears which i think complements his hairstyle actually pretty well why I chose him was his silhouette's a little odd and it's a bit bulky, but I feel like it's really well complemented by his belt accessories. There's such great work done there just to make it not feel flat and give it some interesting texture and silhouette. And his pants, I think, have some differentiated patterns. So again, we're playing with some very design elements and aesthetic pieces within the clothing just to kind of help keep his style fresh. But it's really those belt elements that feel most engaging and interesting to me. What really stood out to me about Charlotte, he also has a similar boxy silhouette to Eustace Kid, but it's just that like scarf around his neck. I thought it was exclusively part of the jacket, but he also has like a coat that sometimes goes over his shoulder with some fur. But outside of that, it's like an independent scarf with multiple layers of fur for some excellent texture and even dimension with how it kind of expands and gets wider around his shoulders. And I love how he has like these belt buckle elements, which just further adds texture to the outfit on top of the texture that we're getting on those accessories with the studs. So cool. But let's talk the Vin Smoke family because they are serving us some looks and they're almost a little Power Rangery where there's like different colors for each of them. I would imagine that Sanji is like the yellow one, even though he's not, oh, he's not fully embodying the kind of uniform that his siblings are. I'm just gonna touch on the brothers all together. I mean, I feel like their style is pretty interesting with a little minor flex. I like the core suit that they have with like the coordinated shirt and shoes with like the long cloak and then the scarf. I like that there's some differentiation in a little bit of the color palette just to kind of complement the different shades of color that we're kind of getting between the three of them. But I also like how I think a couple of them have a bit more of a formal kind of suit, actually, an actual, an actual suit with an interesting kind of fasten or buckle orientation with the jacket. I feel like that's also a nice touch, but I also love like the fur jet, like overcoats or shoulders that they have. It's similar to Doflamingo, but just with green, red, and blue. So I just really love that we're getting some nice texture play there for each of them as well. But Reiju is absolutely serving. Like she looks so freaking good. I love the unique silhouette that she's giving with like this main look that's almost like a butterfly cape situation and her dress is just so interesting. She That's what it is. She almost reminds me of Jet Set Radio. Love her style. She is absolutely killing it. Those boots are incredible. Like she's honestly one of the best dressed females in the series. I wish we could have gotten a little bit more from her. Uh, I just love her style. And pink, obviously, because I'm super biased towards that. And so lucky that someone mentioned Perona because I wasn't going to initially include her. I didn't even know she existed. I know it's not exactly Lolita style, but it definitely has some common elements like layered ruffled dresses, parasol, a unique, interesting top hat situation. And she definitely dabbles within a few different outfits along that spectrum. And even with some more pops of color and like some striped socks, so it's definitely a nice, playful style. And it speaks to, again, the diverse inspirations that go into the style and aesthetics of the clothing within the One Piece series. So how is that for covering 
the wide range of one piece fashion and style. This was definitely an undertaking, but not as crazy as I thought it would be. Tell me what you thought. Who's your favorite character? What's your favorite style? Is Are any of these aesthetics speaking to your personal style? I would love to hear it. Let me know in the comments. But of course, until the next video, I'll talk to you later.